So when it comes to storing potatoes, there's actually a number of different ways to do this. Each one is going to slightly affect the flavor and the use for the byproduct, which would be a potato of some sort. And so because of that, you only want to do the ones that you know you're going to eat. So do all these in small batches, see which ones you like, and then go from there. I would hate for you guys to use your entire potato harvest up on a method that you do not like. So the number one way is storage. Storage means you need to cure said potato. Curing is a very simple process where you're simply going to lay the potatoes on either a garage floor or a basement floor. This allows the potato to sit at around 10 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius will allow for that outer skin to heal and actually toughen up and give you time to detect any disease or problems within those potatoes. I like to run a fan over top of mine and I like to flip them and check them every once in a while. After about 14 days to one month depending on how ambitious you are you'll then move them into cold storage. Cold storage is simply basically a fridge. It's a mimicking a refrigerator is what that is. I have one under my stamps that's plumbed to the outdoors. This could involve a garage. It doesn't have to be special. It just can't freeze. You want it to be cold enough that the potato doesn't decide to go and grow on you. So the next way to do this is pressure canning. Now you can do this with the skins on. You can do this with the skins off. And ultimately the end use for this product is going to be a mashed potato, you can do oven roast potatoes at this point, you name it. Because you're pre-cooking or boiling these potatoes prior to actually eating them, they actually can just be simply warmed up in the microwave and eaten. That's the beauty of pressure canning. You cannot water bath can potatoes. It's not approved by the people who make the rolls, not me. And so that is something that I would not tell you to do, but pressure canning is completely within your power. It takes about 40 minutes, typically speaking, but you always want to follow the instructions on your pressure canner. Now the last method, probably my favorite method, mostly because I'm always in a rush, is actually Idaho mashed potatoes or the Betty Crocker dehydrated mashed potatoes. A food invented by Canadians, I'll have you all know, and that is powdered potatoes. This process is actually pretty darn easy to do. All you're gonna do is make your potatoes the way you always make mashed potatoes. I don't peel mine prior to because I like to use this handy dandy method. If I knew the creator of it, I would tell you who it is. You take the great you smush the potato through and voila there is no skin in your mashed potato. From there, you're going to mash it with either a food processor, a blender, whatever the case is, and then put it on a dehydrator or freeze dryer if you're bougie enough. After that point, you will let it turn into what looks like a sheet, like a fruit roll-up sheet, and you're going to blend that or powderize that, and you officially have your potatoes. One thing I will say is the pre-blending of the potato before you put it on the dehydrator is going to determine how how gritty it comes out. So if you do not blend it enough in that initial blending process, you will end up with gritty mashed potato. I've, I've had this before from the boxes that I purchased. So just keep that in mind. Now, I personally don't have a ton of cold storage room. So I like to do a combination of the dehy and then the pressure canned version. And I do this once my potatoes are looking a little bit worse for wear when it comes to the cold storage. Let me know in the comments down below what your ways for storing potatoes are and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!